Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel where I post consistently every Monday and Thursday. Today we're looking at micro interactions and how you can perfect the process that is micro interaction. I'll be dividing this video into different portions so you can find the chapters and timestamps down here. Now let's begin with the definition of micro interactions so you have a clear picture of what micro interactions really are. So to give you a crisp one line definition of micro interactions, these are small or micro visual changes that happen when you interact with the user interface. Now micro interactions by principle have two important parts or two important components. One is the trigger, second is the feedback. Yes, it's as simple as that. A trigger is what either the user does. So if you have your phone, you're swiping through or you're double tapping or you're clicking something, all these are triggers that we have on a device. Now triggers have two variants. The first variant is human or user triggers where we tap on something, we double tap, we scroll through, we slide, things like that. Those are our human or user triggers. The other trigger is generally the system triggers or the application triggers. So if the application wants to give you a pop-up, for example, that your system is working fine, or your order has been placed successfully. That was triggered by the system and not always by the users. Now the second principle is the feedback. The feedback is the response you get if you click on something or if you drag something around, or it could just be a message from the system saying something has happened. Now the feedback or the response needs to be visual. Otherwise, how will the user identify that something has happened on the screen? Now, an example of feedback not being visual would be when you submit a form and the information is passed to the database of that company or the database of that website will not have any visual consequences. However, as UI designers, we have the responsibility to let the user know that the data has been saved or the form has been filled and the response has been saved. Now comes the fun part of the video where I'll be taking you through each and every step that you need to take to create a great micro interaction here inside my favorite tool, which is Figma. You can do it in any tool that you like. Today we'll be using this little switch for example, and I'm gonna call it Switchy. So let's see how Switchy can help us create a great micro interaction. Now the trigger in this case could be two kinds of triggers. One could be just a press, the other could be a drag. So those are the two triggers that we're gonna take today. So remember, now the first, now the first step is to, uh, now the first step is to identify the trigger that the user will have in this condition. So in this case, there can be two kinds of triggers. One could be a drag where the person is dragging the switch from left to right. And the second would be a press. A lot of people just click the switch and it generally changes state. So in this case, we will have to take both of them in perspective. Now the second step would be to identify the different paths that, th that this can take. So what can be the different states we can have? We can have an off state. I'll just mark this with red and we can have a on state, which we can mark with green. Now, are those the only two states that we can have? No, we also need to consider certain edge cases or certain cases where this might not work. You can have one disabled state where you can have this switch disabled. We'll mark this in gray and we can have an error state where we can say, okay, there might be an error turning on Wi-Fi or your Wi-Fi might have any problems. So in this case, the error will also be in red, but a different shade here, just for the sake of explaining. Now we have these four major states and the micro interaction is responsible for stating all of these. So make sure you create a checklist before creating your interaction. So now let's go on to the fun part, which is actually creating the interactions. Figma, XD, all these tools have the basic tools to get started. Now I will just duplicate or copy this artboard here to the second state. And in this state, I'll be making changes. So I'll be, turning the switch on in this case. I'll just move the switch button to the right and I will make sure that this little background is a shade of green. 
This is a perfect shade of green. We can also make changes to the text. If your Wi-Fi had a cross around it, you could have animated that icon to showcase that Wi-Fi is on. But for now, this is more than enough in this case. Now we need to create a disabled state for which I'll just copy the parent one here. And once that is done, I will of course make sure that this is gray, just like we had in our first artboard. However, this needs to be lower in opacity maybe 50 or 40% in opacity. This would mean that you just cannot access this element right now. You can even state the disabled state with some text or some helping message. Turn off aeroplane, aeroplane mode to turn on Wi-Fi. So this would be why this is disabled. And this is a message that is given from the system. So now we don't have the user doing anything. We have the system saying, hey, you have aeroplane mode on. Another state needs to be error. So if there is some fault with the Wi-Fi or if the device's Wi-Fi system has some error or there's some bug that occurred, you need to say, hey, there is some error or some issue has occurred. So again, a tooltip can be given. In this case, the tooltip or this little um, message could be in red for sure. And it could say there was some problem connecting with Wi-Fi. You can always describe this so that the user isn't confused as to what the problem has occurred. Again, the messaging of the feedback must be very clear. Now there are two more important elements to micro interactions that I will show on screen as examples for sure. One is Delight. Delight is something that can be an added animation. It could be a Lottie file. So for example, if you place an order on Zomato or Swiggy, they have this confetti falling down and saying, hey, you saved this much money. And that again is not part of the trigger, but it is a part of the feedback. You're seeing that something has successfully happened. And what better way to show success with confetti? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes, animations like Lottie files, if paired with a micro interaction, can also be a part of the micro interaction. Otherwise, it's just a random animation floating on screen, isn't it? Another principle is you need to make it short and simple. Here's an example of what is not generally short and simple and what cannot always be considered a micro interaction. These are long animations just happening and the user is waiting for the animation to end. That cannot be considered as a micro interaction. However, you can combine micro interactions to make a bigger micro interactions like this checkout button where you click on the button and it checks you out. It shows different states and each state has some meaning to it. So this can be a big micro interaction in one. However, if it does not have any effect, if there's no actual thing being done apart from this animation, it cannot be called a micro interaction. There needs to be some action being taken place from the system's end, from the user's end, and also has to have some consequence to that action. Another part I never spoke about is called audio feedback. Now, sound design is where it comes into. For example, if you go to your phone's keyboard and you start typing, you will have those little typing animations which come up and down. However, there will also be a sound like this. Now that sound indicates that your something is being pressed and something is being added to the screen. If without that sound, a lot of times if you're making a mistake or you're typing something by mistake, you can never notice, especially in the era of multitasking where people just like to type on the side while they're doing something else. Sound or audio can be a huge feedback or response in that case. A great combination is where audio and visual feedback comes with a trigger and that is a perfect micro interaction. I hope this can help you improve your micro interactions just by understanding what is the background of it, what is necessary and what are the different states you can work for. This video would not be possible without your continuous support. So I would appreciate a like on this video and a quick subscribe will allow you to get more of my videos. Maybe click on that bell icon so that you don't miss out. I'll see you every Monday and Thursday, same time, same place with more such cool design content. I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.